This app is going to allow user input with a date picker and two steppers, which combined will tell us when they want to wake up, how much sleep they usually like, and how much coffee they drink. So please start by adding three properties that let us store the information for those controls. At state, private var wake up equals date. At state, private var sleep amount equals 8.0. At state, private var coffee amount equals one. Inside our body, we're going to place three sets of components wrapped in a VStack and the navigation view. So let's start with the wake up time. Replace the default hello world text view with this. Navigation view, VStack, text, when do you want to wake up? Dot font, dot headline. Date picker, please enter a time. Selection, dollar wake up, display components, dot hour and minute and then dot labels hidden. After that, I'll place a comment saying more to come. Because we're in a VStack, that will render the date picker as a spinning wheel on iOS, which is fine here. We've asked for hour and minute configuration because we care about the time someone wants to wake up and not the day. And with the labels hidden modifier, we don't get a second label for the picker. The one above is more than enough. Next, we're going to add a stepper to let users choose roughly how much sleep they want. By giving this an in range of 4 through 12 and a step of 0.25, we can be sure they'll enter sensible values. But we can combine that with a percent %g string interpolation specifier, so we see numbers like 8 and not 8.0000000. Add this code in place of the more to come comment. Text desired amount of sleep. Dot font. Dot headline. Stepper value dollar sleep amount in 4 through 12, step 0.25. Text, string interpolation, sleep amount, specifier percent %g, hours. Finally, we'll add one last stepper and label to handle how much coffee they drink. This time, we'll use the range of 1 through 20, because surely 20 coffees a day is enough for anyone. But we'll also display one of two labels inside the stepper to handle pluralization better. If the user has set a coffee amount of exactly one, we'll show one cup. Otherwise, we'll use that amount plus cups. Add these inside the VStack, below the previous views. Text, daily coffee intake, dot font, dot headline. Stepper, value, dollar coffee amount, in one through 20. If coffee amount is equal to one, text, one cup else, text, string interpolation, coffee amount, cups. The final thing we need is a button to let users calculate the best time they should go to sleep. We could do that with a simple button at the end of the VStack. But to spice up things a little, I want to try something new. We're going to add a button directly to the navigation bar. First, we need a method for the button to call. So add an empty calculate bedtime method like this. Funk calculate bedtime. Now we need to use the navigation bar items modifier to add a trailing button to the navigation view. Trailing in left to right languages like English means on the right, and you can provide any view here. If you want several buttons, you can use a HTAC for example. While we're here, we might as well also use navigation bar title to put some text at the top. So add these modifiers to the VStack. Dot navigation bar title, better rest. Dot navigation bar items, trailing, and here I'll put a comment, our button here. In our case, we want to replace that comment with a calculate button. Previously, I explained that buttons come in two forms. Button hello, print button was tapped, or button action, print button was tapped, and then text hello. We could use the first option here if we wanted. Button calculate, self.calculate bedtime. That would work fine, but I'd like you to reconsider. That code creates a new closure, and the closure's sole job is to call a method. Closures are, for the most part, just functions without a name. We assign them directly to something, rather than having them as a separate entity. So we're creating a function that just calls another function. Wouldn't it be better for everyone if we could just skip that middle layer entirely? Well, we can. What the button cares about is that its action is some sort of function that accepts no parameters and sends nothing back. 
It doesn't care whether that's a method or a closure, as long as they both follow those rules. As a result, we can actually send calculate bedtime directly to the button's action, like this. Action, calculate bedtime. Now when people see that, they often think I've made a mistake. They want to write this instead. Calculate bedtime, open and close parens. However, that code won't work, and in fact means something quite different. If we add the parentheses after calculate bedtime, it means call calculate bedtime, and it will send back the correct function to use when the button's tapped. So Swift would require that calculate bedtime returns a closure to run. By writing calculate bedtime without parentheses, rather than with parentheses, we're telling Swift to run that method when the button's tapped, and nothing more. It won't return anything that should then be run. Swift really blurs the lines between functions, methods, closures, and even operators, plus, minus, and so on, which is what allows us to use them so interchangeably. This code won't do anything yet because calculate bedtime's empty, but at least our UI is good enough for the time being.